What's going on everybody? Justin here. The Winds of Change is the channel name. Small wins, big changes. That's the gist of it. I'm going to talk to you today about three things that you're going to want to track for your taxes this year and going forward. So even with all the new tax stuff, well the new tax uh, rules that you see a lot of people talking about can be summed up pretty quickly. I'll go ahead and give it to you as a bonus on this video. Here's the new tax rule. You have to pay your taxes on income that you make. <laughs> they've changed some of the thresholds. They've changed the dollar amount and they've changed the things that you have to report. But pretty much the two second new tax rule for 2022, pay your taxes. All right. Now, back to the three things that I want to talk to you about. Before I get into them, I want to let you know that I am not a CPA. I'm not an accountant. And I don't work for the IRS. I'm just a reseller who's been doing this since 2004 and specifically on FBA since 2009. So I've been through several tax seasons and picked up some things that are going to work across the board to my knowledge, excuse me, to my knowledge regardless of state. So the first thing I feel like is the most basic, right? The second thing I feel like maybe not a lot of people know about, but they have an idea. And the third thing is really going to be the most important, and you're going to want to stick around for that. So the first thing we're talking about is mileage. A big deduction at the end of the year for me every year and for a lot of other people is mileage. Now, you can turn in your travel expenses for deductions in, in a few different ways. The two main ones are gas cost and mileage. Take it from a humble reseller, fellow reseller, fellow business entrepreneur you want to do the mileage deduction nine out of ten times i couldn't imagine a scenario where you would want to do gas this is why you get 58 and a half cents back per mile to deduct from your profits in 2022 that's up two and a half percent from last year so that means if you drive 100 miles it'll be 58 dollars and 50 cents deducted from your taxable income that's huge right that's a huge deduction every year so keep track of your miles how are you going to do it you can do it in a log book you can do it in a spreadsheet there's a lot of programs there's a lot of apps i personally use mile iq turn it on leave it on every drive that i take i can just flip through to make it business or to make it personal and then i get a report at the end of the month at the end of the year so what's nice about that is is at the end of the year i can just say print 2021 20, results and it would email them to me it will give me it in a few different ways but it'll give you your total business miles driven and if you keep track of it like that i guarantee you you're going to find a lot more miles that are able to be deducted than you would think right like anytime you drive to go pick up uh, boxes to ship out and anytime you go drop something off at the ups store those little things like that add up over time right so that's number one track your mileage number two this is something that i think a lot of people um have an idea about but they they go astray sometimes this is something in my first year of reselling and in business i really didn't think about um and it's like this for anybody that sells goods right anybody that has items that they sell and it's called your cost of goods sold so how that works is your cost of goods sold is a deduction, right? I think a lot of people go wrong and they think, okay, I'm going to save all my receipts. I know I need to do that. I save all my receipts. I got my TJ Maxx, my Walmart, my wholesale receipts. I got all these receipts from everywhere that I've bought in items, products to resell. And I'm going to turn those in and then those are going to be a deduction. It's going to be disappointing because that's not the way that it works. You only get a deduction for the cost of the items that you actually sold right the items that you don't sell are still considered an asset and we're going to cover that in in the third tip but for cost of goods sold you need a way to track it you need a way to track the amount the the dollar amount the value of the items that you sold and again you can do this in a few different ways you can do a spreadsheet which if you're doing any kind of volume um, or even small volume is going to be a huge pain in the butt. If you're anything like me, it, it just wouldn't get done. It would not. <laughs> so what I do is I use a software program. There's a bunch of them out there. I use Inventory Lab. <clears throat> I'll put a link at, at the, in the description below 
Uh, I'm not affiliated with them or anything like that, unfortunately. It'd be sort of awesome if I was, right? But I'm not. I'm just help, just helping you homies out. Inventory Lab, um, there is a monthly charge for it, but it's so worth it, right? So worth it. So anytime I, I, I put something in, um, anytime I list something through that program, it keeps track of the amount that I put in. So if I buy something for $10, I list it, put it in the system as $10, put what I want to sell it as, it'll give me my profit breakdown, how much I'm going to make and everything like that. But for tax purposes, this is amazing because at the end of the year or at any time during the year, I could run the report and it'll tell me through my gross sales, it'll break it down, all the fees, and then it'll say cost of goods sold. So it already tracks it for me. I have to track it one time. I have to track it when I put it in. If you're not using the software system, you're going to have to record every item, every SKU, and in the, in the amount that it costs. And then when it sells, you're going to have to go back to that spreadsheet or however you're recording it, find that item, and then you know update your inventory and stuff like that. Um, and you're going to have to be a lot more detailed about that, which uh, to me sounds horrible, but maybe some of you out there um, would like the extra work. Me. I use the software, make it easy, invaluable, really it is. So your cost of goods sold. So number one, track your mileage. Number two, your cost of goods sold. Your cost of goods sold is the only cost of goods that's gonna be a deduction on your final uh, profit that's gonna subtract from what you have to pay taxes on at the end of the year. That brings us to our third, probably most overlooked part of uh, filing taxes that I never really hear anybody talk about and that I was blindsided by my first year in business. Your ending inventory value is the valuation of the inventory that you did not sell. So it's how much your inventory you still have is valued at. And that is not a deduction. And so, so see, this is why you can't have all your receipts turn them in as deductions, right? Because the way that, the, the way that it's looked at is that if you still have those items that you bought, then you still have that asset. It's considered an asset to your business. So if you spend, we'll just make it a small scale. If you spend $10 on an item and you don't sell that, you're not out that $10 because you still have that asset that's valued at $10, okay? How it works is, is if you have an item that you buy for $10 and you sell it for 20, right? Then you take that 10 that you spent, you deduct it from the 20 that you just earned as a cost of goods sold, and then you have your 10 left over, which is gonna be your profit, and then that's what you're gonna owe your taxes on. Ending inventory value is something that's gonna be uh, difficult to track as well if you try to do it by hand, I think. If you're trying to use like a spreadsheet or something. Um, same with the cost of goods sold. You may enjoy it. Uh, I think you're probably the minority if you love doing, doing that, but hey, if that's what works for you, that's what's gonna work. Again, I use the same program, Inventory Lab, there's other programs out there, but this just makes it so nice, right? I can go to the report, I can print inventory valuation, and it'll tell me, based on the information that I put in, how much um, value my inventory has uh, that I that I have set up in there. It'll tell me, you know, how much it is um, based on if I sell it all at the price that I was going to sell it all, and based on how much I put, um, I, I actually spent on it in there. So that's going to be real important, okay? So you're gonna to need to find a way to track your mileage. You're gonna to need to track your cost of goods sold because that's gonna be your deduction for your, for your goods. And then you're gonna need a way to track your ending inventory value. Now, if it's the end of the year and you're blindsided by this, thinking, oh my gosh, I, I, you know, all my stuff's in Amazon warehouse. Uh, I got a bunch of crap in the basement or in the shed or wherever you keep it. And you didn't keep track of it for last year. You can do something called an average inventory ending inventory value where you can get an average of, of it, right? And again, you have to work with your CPA on that, but that is a legitimate way um, to do that as well. Say you got a bunch of books and you spend an average of a dollar a book, then you can take the 100 books that you have, you know, it's $100 ending inventory value or something like that. But going into this year, I strongly recommend that whenever you're watching this, you start as soon as possible tracking for the end of the year when you do your taxes, your ending inventory value. You don't want that to come back. Um, you don't want that to come back and bite you and uh, do any flags for audits or anything like that. Mileage, cost of goods sold, ending inventory value. Those are the three tips that I have for you today. Get on top of it. Stay vigilant in your record keeping. Keep hustling. Go out there. Make some money and have some fun. And I'll catch you next time.